One, 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 one shot, now the future is yours. Go. Hello and welcome to another big edition of the NBL One Show. I'm Megan Hustrate, he's Pete Hooley, and boy oh boy, we have a lot to talk about today. We do, another week packed full of highlights, individual performances, team performances, and probably two together, two of the most exciting guests we've had. And if you're a young point guard coming up, these are two guests that you want to watch play every single weekend. Point guards, elite with the ball in their hands, yeah. super exciting, cannot wait to chat to them. Yeah, it's a point guard bonanza on the NBO One show it today. Is. That's a one-on-one -on -one battle too that I would love to Ooh, see. Oh, that'd be good. We'll see what we can do there because we have, you know, got a lot of little jewels we want to see mm -hmm. and organise amongst ourselves. But we have got plenty to get through today. We're going to start off with some terrific news. We have a new naming rights sponsor. It's a huge welcome to Coles Express. We're so happy to have them on board. How good is that? And that's exactly what we want until the conclusion of the 2023 season. You see that picture there. Uh, really exciting time for the league, especially with how much travel a lot of the teams have to do. It's perfect for everybody. Yes, they are helping to support the health and happiness of Australians who love to play and watch basketball around the country. Well, we're certainly watching a lot of it. <laughs> Not personally playing too much uh, right now in Melbourne, but Coles Express is one of Australia's leading convenience retailers. They've got 723 stores across Australia and close to 5,700 team members. Teamwork makes the dream work, of course. So Coles Express is always nearby to help keep Aussies on the move. And I tell you what, it just fits perfectly on the logo doesn't it? Have a look at that. Oh, it looks fabulous little, with the red. Iconic wet, Coles red. My little weatherman figuring out which way to move my hand. So, <laughs> let's get on with it. Um, we've got some other great news coming through today. I think I'm going to get a bit emotional about this, but um, our Geelong Supercat superstar Sarah Blitzarves has been called up to the Australian Opals Olympic team and it's just the most wonderful news. We had her on the show a couple of weeks ago and she spoke so honestly and openly about how hard the last few months have been for her. She was cut from the Phoenix Mercury training camp, came back to Australia in hotel quarantine and cut from the Opals team. So um, she's off to Tokyo this week and, and she will be an Olympian and it's so well deserved for such a great person. Oh, absolutely well deserves an understatement and we did speak to her and she was very emotional and honest about that and for her to get this chance is, is awesome and she's been balling out so looking forward to seeing what she does with that opportunity. Yeah, it's the best news and um, I think any time we can have a, you know, a player out of NBL1 out NBL1 in to the Olympics. It's pretty cool. We'll take that. We've had a few of them. We've had a few of them. So looking forward to adding another one to the list. Well done, Blicky, and all the best to you in the Opals. OK, let's kick into the show. We're going to start with NBL1 North. Could Northside be the smoky of NBL1? Both teams got important wins over USC at the weekend who were higher on the ladder. Yeah, huge win, uh, wins from both teams. And in the women's, Tiana Mangakaya. Starting to find her feet, two 30 plus point games and she's always exciting when she gets in this kind of form and that's exactly what they're going to need to, to keep doing this if they want to be that smoky of the NBL One North. Courtney Woods has been in form all season, continues to lead the team really well. Another of you know many of those players we talk about, the importance of an NBL One campaign. Heading into WNBL, um, the women, they're 11th on the ladder with a four and six record. And in the men's, well, a star recruit who's been in the headlines the last few weeks for all the right reasons is making a big difference. Well, he has. Mitch McCarron returning home to Queensland, playing for Northside, and he's going to have a really big impact. We talk about uh, on and off the floor, these NBL guys coming in. He already has had those 11 assists to his 14 points. He's going to do a bit of everything. Really exciting time for Northside and he's going to have a big part of their late run in this season. It is sort of um, spread amongst the team though. We've seen, you know, across the stat sheet in the last few weeks, they've got different guys who can step up and continue to do so on any given night. They've got plenty of guys and as we said, Mitch McCarron is going to come in and not try and Put up 50 points a game. He's going to be perfect to get other guys involved. Logan Kyle, uh, Tema Tem, Zach Williams, Hook, all these guys can really just chip in. And if they can start to roll with Mitch McCarron leading, who knows what they can do up there. Well, let's head up to the Gold Coast now, speaking of NBL One North, and catch up with a star from the Rollers. Welcome to the NBL One show, Lauren Mansfield. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. How is life on the Gold Coast? I'm sure it's a lot nicer than things are for us in Melbourne right now. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really nice. The weather's nice. Um, obviously, we can still be playing basketball and out and about. So I do feel very blessed to be up here. 
Now, you had a really good weekend yourself, and you're sitting eighth on the table, five and five record. How have you seen the season so far, and what do you guys have to improve on to climb up this ladder in the second half of the season? Yeah, we've had a tough season so far. We've had a lot of injuries. Um, obviously, I've been out for a while. Um, we had um, our little point guards done an ankle as well. So we've had quite a few injuries. Um, but, you know, it's allowed other people to step up and um, get a bit more opportunity to, you know, make plays and kind of um, assert themselves in our team. Um, I think, you know, we've still got a long way to go. We are sitting eighth. We want to try and get a few more uh, wins on the board to c- kind of creep up the ladder a bit. Um, but, yeah, I think we just need to keep building and keep working on our team game um, and just, yeah, getting better every time we're at, we're at training and at games. You're back with a vengeance. You averaged 27 points across the weekend. But what was it that kept you sidelined as you touched on? Um, so I did my ankle pretty bad. Um, I broke it. Um, there was a little fracture. Did that in a Townsville game, just right at the end of the game. Um, so I've just kind of been rehabbing that. Um, and I was able to get back earlier than expected. So I think it was like about six weeks I was out. Well, we're watching some of your highlights there. One of the most exciting players to watch when they had the ball in your hand. Something good always seems to happen. So what are you trying to get out of personally of this NBL 1 North season? Because we know you're coming off the back of a really strong WNBL season. So what are your goals and what do you want to build on this year? Yeah, I want to just keep getting better every time I'm on the court. Um, You know, obviously, it's kind of like our off season. So I'm really trying to work hard, you know, at trainings and um, on my individual game. Um, so, you know, each year I go back to the WNBL, I want to be a better player. And so I really tried to work on my, um, you know, creating space off the dribble. I think, you know, I've always kind of been good at dribbling, but kind of maybe being more productive with my dribble. So, um, you know, creating more space with less dribbles. Um, but I mean, main goals are just to get back to playing well, um, get back in form, um, Obviously, to win a championship, that's what you play for. Um, so, yeah, really just trying to find form and um, try and push push for a final spot in the NBL and, um, yeah, hopefully win a championship. Well, I'm glad you brought up dribbling because you're super crafty with the ball in your hand. Where did that come from? And who do you – have you looked at someone's videos a lot growing up to aspire to have that um, creative ability with the ball in your hand? Because, as I said, it's super fun to watch when you get rolling. Thank you. Uh, So I watched, growing up, I watched my brother and he was, um, he was very crafty with the ball. So he was like someone that I always looked up to and I love, I just loved watching him play. It was just fun to watch. You know, he would, he was just super creative, very crafty. Um, And so I kind of feel like I tried to like copy the way that he played. Um, Yeah. And then just, I, I watch, you know, all sorts of basketball. So I like watching the WNBA and the NBA and um, just watching all the point guards, basically. Um, I like Steph and um, Lillard and just all those guys and just kind of like taking those moves and trying to implement them into my game. Well, speaking of point guards, you are returning to Sydney next WNBL season and you'll be playing alongside one of Australia's rising stars in that department in Shyla Hill. Are you looking forward to playing with her? Yes, very much so. Um, I I like Shiloh's game. She's another very crafty point guard. So I think it'll be fun, you know, going up against her at training, but um, playing with her and, you know, she's a knockdown shooter. So it'll be fun, you know, playing with her. And um, I think the system, I'm sure there'll be a lot of on balls. So we'll be able to um, hopefully have a lot of fun together on the court. It's going to be one of the most exciting backcourts in the league, no doubt. So let's rewind on last WNBL season. It was a hub. It was a bit different than usual. And you had a great season yourself. But how did you find the overall experience off the court in a hub setting? Because we never know what could happen in the next few months, as we see in Australia. But yeah. also on the floor as well, because you did have some really good uh, personal success in that season. Yeah, um, I really enjoyed the season. Um, obviously, it was different to anything we've experienced before, being the hub. But... Um, you know, I really enjoyed being around my teammates and I think that's kind of what makes makes or breaks the experience. You know, if you're if it's a good team environment, I think that definitely helps. And so I didn't want the hub to finish. Like I was I was loving it. You know, I, I love my teammates and I think for me I just love playing basketball. So, you know, it's like a dream come true being able to play every second day. So um 
you know, it is important to find that balance and be able to go and do other things as well. But um, yeah, personally, I, I really enjoyed that season and um, I, I wish it would have gone on for longer, to be honest. You've been part of the Opals and had success with the Australian women's national team before the Olympics. Finally starts this week. Will you be glued to your screen and how are you expecting the Opals to go? Absolutely, yeah. I can't wait just for the, the whole Olympics to start. Um, I'll be watching anything I can. I love watching the swimming, so all sorts of sports. Um, but yes, obviously the basketball and um, I think the Opals have shown, you know, with that win against USA that they're more than capable. So um, I think I'll be very excited to watch them and I think they're going to, I would love to see them get a medal for sure. Well, we've got to ask because everybody gets to see a glimpse into the professional athletes' lives. So your experience away from the floor right now might be a bit different, living in the Gold Coast, obviously. So when you're not yep. training and playing, what do you get up to and how do you spend your off time? Yeah, so uh, I'm one of those, I'm a bit, I've been trying to like, so I'm very basketball and like all things basketball. So I've been having to like tell myself, okay, no, you need to do other things. So I, I love to go to the beach, um, just get outdoors, do hikes, um, that sort of stuff, like more nature sort of stuff. Um, and then I've started to get into a bit of coaching as well, just coaching um, basketball, younger kids and um, that sort of stuff because I would like to eventually um, do that after I um, finish playing. So, yeah, just kind of starting to, to build that up. And um, But, again, that's basketball. So, yeah, <laughs> usually <laughs> can't help myself. <laughs> well, you would be a natural coach and I reckon any young kids that get to play under your mentorship would be very lucky. You are on the Gold Coast, so it's a lovely place to get outside and explore. Yep. Um, so good to catch up with you, Lauren Mansfield. Thank you for joining us on the NBL One show. No worries. Thanks for having me. Time to chat NBL One West and it has been the dunk show for Coburn, Pete. Well, it might be dunk of the season and that's something Oof. talking about how many dunks we've seen this season. But Josh Hunt with an outstanding dunk um, in this game and Nick Pazoglu, who is another one who is always going to be throwing him down. He gets big blocks. He is a freak athlete, uh, just a great player who I really hope gets a chance in the NBL, deserves it. But this is the dunk right here from Josh Hunt. And what makes it even better is he turns down the oop to Nick Pazoglu and just absolutely <laughs> throws it down. That is, it's going to be hard to beat that because the defender stepped away, wanted to time that block perfectly. And in the end, found himself on a post. The freeze frame of that is awesome. And Nick Pazoglu said himself that he was under it and it sounded like it was even better than what would have been mm. on the film. So a uh, really exciting team, Coburn, when you see those kind of athletes and what they're doing on the floor. And uh, really exciting for both those players. That done just needs a music track underneath it. You could have so much fun putting different tracks under that. Well, we might. Well, maybe we'll leave but, that for the but, producer. I'm free. <laughs> okay, we'll see what you can go with. Uh, but two big wins on the weekend, beating Southwest 90 to 73 and the Goldfields 84 to 78. The women also had a big win over the Slammers, beating them 94 to 38. That was a huge result. Taylor Simmons led the way with 25 points and nine rebounds. Yeah, huge wins overall. And that's what we said, a really exciting time for all of them at Coburn. And looking forward to seeing the next part of the season. Well, speaking of exciting, this man has been the biggest signing to date in NBL One as we head out West and catch up with Scott Machado. Welcome to the show. Hey, what's up, guys? Well, how's life in the West? Um, it's good. It's been good. Um, it's been very gloomy out here, but um, life in the West has been treating me really well. I mean, Megan said it, probably the biggest signing we've had in NBL 1. You don't often see an MVP caliber NBL 1 player, NBL player, go to the NBL 1 in an off season where it, the season went so long, you, you can understand if you wanted to rest. So, what happened? How did this decision come about that you wanted to play and then you ended up heading west? Well, I mean, for me, I, I started to look around to try to get my younger brother to come over to Australia and play some basketball. And I was reaching out to a couple of clubs to, to see if I could help him out. Um, and throughout those lines, it got mixed up that I wanted to play NBL 1. So a couple of teams started to reach out to me saying, hey, uh, I think you should come play NBL 1. Then they reached out to my agent. Um, and my agent just worked up a deal and was like, hey, man, I think this is something you can't you can't really pass up. And um, I wanted to play. Usually I play in the offseason um, and just the format of how the NBL one is has been perfect. Um, 
I get to do my own trainings when I feel like it, um, work on my own game. And then they have their main practices that happen twice a week, um, which made a lot of sense. So um, most of the guys that do the NBL one have jobs and, and things like that. So I get to do a bunch of things that I would do in the off season myself um, and not only get to tour a little bit of the West side of Australia and, and get to learn a little bit more about the culture. So for me, it's been, it's been perfect. Um, I get to still do what I do, have fun doing it, uh, work on different things in my game, play with a different group of guys, um, kind of reset. Um, and so for me, it's been, it's been a decision of not only not going back because of COVID and having to come back and do the two week quarantine for me, it's been pretty similar. Just I'm staying in Australia and I got to be a little bit more of a tourist during this time. So it's been fun. It's been real fun. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> this is <laughs> this has kind of happened by accident. Um, and and then what's kind of happened with the brother then? That that that's my question. <laughs> so so I mean, still waiting for see what's going to happen. Um, he won't be able to come this year. Um, it was going to be a tough decision for him to get out here, and it was going to be a tough tough thing for teams to get him out here. Um, just the whole quarantine and all of that. Um, but for him right now, he is deciding if he'll forego his senior year in college or if he'll end up going to play pro. Um, we were Brazilians and he has a Brazilian passport. So he's thinking about going over to Brazil and um, he's going to start building his resume. But uh, I think NBL one would have been cool for him. Um, and I think just to be able to have him show his talents and be able to show what he's capable of doing, I think would have been perfect. So. Um, I thought if he could come out here and be next to me while I'm playing, it would have been, would have been real cool. I think we'd all love to see that too, Machado brothers on the court at the same time. But when the signing was announced, I think I was saying that you're going to have the biggest impact in NBL 1 off the court. Now, we've seen it with this video that went viral with you signing the basketball for this young fan. And how special is it for you knowing that this is a different group of people that you get to touch with? Seeing the video here now, fresh cut as always, but... To be able to give back to people who necessarily wouldn't get to see you in this kind of situation. Yeah, um, I mean, I guess, I guess for me, it's uh, it, not that it's a normal thing, but for me, it's I, I just love humans, um, and that, that might sound a little cliche, but even when I go through my day to day, um, just seeing people that don't even know who I am, um, just to see a smile being put on their face, like. Uh, my partner usually says, like, if you could leave someone better than you met them or if you've had some type of impact in their life just by making them smile or just the littlest thing, you've you've done a good job. So for me, I, I try to do that day in and day out. Um, and when I seen this little girl wanting an autograph, she was so shy. Um, and just for her to build up the courage to come up to me and be like, can you sign my basketball? I already know it took a lot from her. So I was just, for me, it's, like five seconds and to see that smile, it made me smile. Um, not only on the outside, but on the inside. Oh, this, her little smile after he signed <laughs> the ball. Um, <laughs> now, obviously fans, you know, and crowds play a big part in the NBL, but to come back to NBL one and have that real community grass roots level feel, have you really enjoyed that? Yes. Um, I've, I've always been an under the radar type of player. Um, I've always never kind of been on like top 10 lists and stuff like that growing up. And for me, it was, I've always played in these type of leagues. Um, and for me, I just be probably playing street ball back home, the local tournaments back home or pick up at, at certain places. But um, just to see the competitiveness that these guys bring also shows like, the fight that I also went through to get here and, and how much these guys give up on their day to day and have a regular job and also come here to play like it's it's a lot that they put to it. Um, and even at the practices that I go to on Tuesday and Thursday, these guys go at me um, talking, talking smack, um, <laughs> making sure that they're like bumping me and giving me real hits and um, for me, I'm going to still be the competitor, but at the same time, just to see that that fight, no matter what level you're at, is, is amazing. Well, that's what everybody thinks is when you get such a big signing to, to an off-season leg like the NBL one, where a lot of these players are trying to take the step to get to where you are in the NBL. So where's your mindset been going into playing these games? Because, you know, on your best night, you could have 30-point triple-double every single night. But where do you come out and where do you attack that? Because, you know, is there certain things you're trying to work on in your game, getting ready for the next NBL season? 
Yeah. So for so for me, it's more like my 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 footwork. Um, when I go into the games, and every game has kind of been different here. Um, my very first game when we played Willerton, I was expecting the guys to just play and and me just help out where I could, and that was the approach. Um, but we started off super slow, and I was like, "Oh, this is gonna turn out real bad if I don't do something now." So <laughs> I just started to play. I started to go. I picked it up to another gear and started to go even harder. And we ended up coming back in that game. We ended up losing that game, but from halftime of that game on, I was telling and repeatedly telling the guys, like, "Yo, this is your guys' team. Like, I'm I'm here to help you guys, and I'm here to do my part, but I'm also here working on my game." because I, I'm i here for like an off season and then going back to the NBL season. And my thing is footwork right now, just my footing and, and getting to my spots and, and shots that I want to take when it's, I guess, more of a difficult situation. And it's me putting the perspective in the game at the time and, and how I want to go about the shot or how I want to go about the situation, knowing what shot I want to take, um, and fortunately, we've been winning these games. So, um, yeah, I've been playing a game inside of a game. <laughs> well, what's it been like, as we spoke about a lot of times, uh, NBL guys would take this as a refreshing mentally this, this offseason. So we know it was a tough season for the Taipans. Are you enjoying this kind of challenge that helps you stay refreshed? And obviously going back to a new challenge with the Taipans, Adam Ford coming in as the head coach. Are you looking forward to that as well when that time comes? Yeah, it's been refreshing. Um, I mean, I, I love the game and... Obviously, playing again now shows it even more just because of it doesn't matter the level for me. Like, I just love playing the game of basketball. So the refresher of being happy, winning games, um, and then just enjoying it. I mean, sometimes you could go through the stresses of getting losses throughout the year. And as you said, like us with the tight pads last year was a disappointing year. So um, we just... I'm, I'm enjoying the process. I'm enjoying playing game in and game out, the practices, my own individual trainings and working on my body. Um, but then, yes, I'm excited for next year. I'm excited for next year, um, the new head coach uh, with 40. Um, and then just the, the new signings and, and the guys that are returning. Um, like the, the main core, most of the guys felt like this was a good team and that's why a lot of us are coming back. So. Well, excited, super excited. Well, we're very much looking forward to seeing what you and the Taipans can produce next season. In the meantime, there's still a lot of basketball to be played in NBL One West, so very much looking forward to seeing you continue your great work on and off court. Thanks for joining us on the NBL One show. Thanks, Meg. Thanks, Pete. Let's head to NBL One Central now, and Tiger time is over for now, Pete. Yeah, the winning streak came to an end after 13 games, losing to Nord 73-59. And that's Ali Wilson's team. Once again, she's doing what she does best. 25 points, 16 rebounds, 11 assists. Ooh. Did absolutely everything. And if you want to stop the Flames, you're going to have to stop Ali Wilson. Amen. Um, the Tigers bounced back on Sunday, but it wasn't without a scare as the Eastern Mavericks pushed them to overtime. So that's a big weekend. Well, it is, and probably a little bit of an emotional uh, down coming after that game. Mm. So you can understand what happened there. And the men had a mixed weekend as well. They lost to Nord 116 to 87, and then they beat the Mavs by 14 on Sunday. So mixed results for the Flames overall. COVID lockdown update. We hate having to do this on the NBL One show. We're sorry, but uh, seven-day lockdown. So South and Central um, postpone at this stage, but obviously keep an eye on our socials over well, all the time. But over the next week or so, we'll have everything um, about the league as it comes to hand. Exactly. I right. just keep staying in touch when the league uh, releases all the information and hope everybody stays mentally well and physically well and hopefully we can get back on the floor as a country once again. And who knows what happens. This changes hour by hour, but wishing everybody all the best. Well, let's move on to some good news now. We will start with the team of the week for NBL One Women and getting us underway. We've just touched on her huge performance in that huge upset win, Alex Wilson from Norwood. Well, that triple-double followed by 38-6 and six versus South. Just a really, really good weekend from her, averaging almost 28 points, 12 rebounds and almost nine assists. She is just doing a bit of everything as we're accustomed to seeing. We love to see it. Tiana Mangakar here from Northside touched on her performance earlier. She's in some top form. 33 points, five rebounds and six assists against UC 
against USC has put her into the team of the week. And Mary Goulding, East Perth had the 35 points, 17 rebounds, 5 assists versus the Eastern Suns. Really nice outing from her, which we're starting to see very consistently yes, now. Yes, we like to see that too. Now, this was a jaw-dropping stat line from Olivia Thompson. Um, standard, though, from her in PL1 this season for South Adelaide. 33 points, 30 rebounds against Woodville, and then 25 points, 16 rebounds against Norwood. So an average of 29 points and 23 points across the weekend. Well, it's just amazing. And we spoke to her, and she's, we know she's not going to play WNBL, but I would not be surprised if her phone was still buzzing with some teams wanting to get that kind of performance. And Kayla Steindl, she rounds out the team of the week with 30 points and 11 rebounds. So well-deserving, all five of those women. Absolutely. Let's look now at the team of the week for NBL One Men and getting us underway is someone who joined us very early on in the season from Forestville is one of our guests, Michael Harris. Well, he's been great, hasn't he? 32 points, nine rebounds, three assists. They did lose that game, but he followed it up with 34, four and seven versus Central Districts. And he's just now starting to find in. They've got other guys contributing. We'll touch on someone else later in this team of the week that they've got rolling. Um, but Jason Kadee, what a splash he's made for Gold Coast 33 and 8 versus Ipswich and then 34 and 12 versus Red City. He loves playing in NBL 1 and Jason Kadeen is really exciting to see him do the, what he does best. We talked about Coburn a bit earlier. Gavin Field was a playmaker for them at the weekend. 19 points and 7 rebounds against Southwest and then 35 points, 7 boards against Goldfields. That's a big weekend. Well, it is. And this is the other one we're talking about. Malith Machar. Now, this is an exciting young fellow. When he gets out there, he's a dunk machine. We've seen from the highlights. Had 16 and 10, followed it up with 33 and 14. He is just really starting to find his feet. And so are the Eagles. And rounding us out for the team of the week, we go to Cairns. Juk Deng, just fresh off signing that new three-year deal, 34 points, eight rebounds. I just love seeing these guys come in and have this massive impact after an NBL season. It's really exciting. Scott Machado's teammate. So I'm sure that all the Cairns Taipans teammates look forward to seeing what their teammates do in the NBL one and they're putting up some big numbers. Well, Team of the Week and Player of the Week hotly contested as usual, brought to you by our wonderful friends at Foot Locker. Well, it's great times in the NBL one. Uh, we are off court a little bit because of COVID, but we're thriving off court with Coles Express and Foot Locker. We're so happy to have you guys on board. Everything's going well besides COVID as expected, <laughs> but uh, stay tuned to all the social media for the updates, but also the highlights. We saw potentially Dunk of the Week, uh, last weekend, you never know what's going to happen night in and night out. Still plenty of games around the nation, so make sure you tune in. Make sure you tune in. Make sure you tune in next Tuesday. We'll see you then.